it is official. For Mike Tyson, the days of fighting the Sammy Scaffs and William Hoseas and Lorenzo Boyds of the world are all over. He will have a shot, it appears, at the heavyweight title. The undefeated heavyweight has signed to fight in the HBO title unification series, and he'll face Trevor Burbick, the WBC title holder, probably sometime this fall. And if Tyson should beat Burbick, he would become the youngest man in history ever to win the heavyweight championship. But first, as I reported last week, he has to beat Alfonso Ratliff. Ratliff is the former WBC cruiserweight champion, but um, whether he has the strength to deal with Tyson is problematical. That fight will be on September 6th. Now, Tyson had to pay a little bit of a price to get into this series. The series is promoted by Don King and Butch Lewis, and they now have options on the next five fights that uh, Tyson will fight, three in the HBO series, and then two after that. So um, he will have to fight for those men in the near future. Well, all that aside, it should add some spark to this tournament, and it should add some interest to the heavyweight division, having Tyson in that unification title series. A little bit earlier, a guy that everybody is talking about in the heavyweight division, Mike Tyson, fought a fella by the name of Alfonso Ratliff. Let's watch. Uh, listen to me now. Listen to me again, will you, Alfonso? Look at me. Look at me now, damn it. I want to talk to you. Remember what we said. Keep the fight clean, everything will be cool. First guy that messes up, it's going to cost him. Shake hands now and good luck to you. Incidentally, uh, Barry and Ray, the over-under for this fight, you can't bet on a winner here because Tyson is so heavily favored, is five rounds. You can bet on whether the fight will go a full five rounds or whether it will go beyond five rounds. And I would think that the smart money is saying that it won't go five. Round number one, Ratliff comes out quickly. You have to see how uh, Ratliff will post this fight, whether or not he's going to move and stick, try to stay out of harm's reach, or try to exchange punch for punch with Mike Tyson. His best bet is use that jab. Here, Ratliff is actually running. He's not actually boxing and moving and utilizing the ring. That, of course, was the tactic of Mitch Green, one of the two fighters who has gone the distance with Mike Tyson. What happens to a majority of fighters that face Mike Tyson, they are more so on the defensive. No one, uh, very few fighters have taken the initiative to try to be offensive with uh, Mike Tyson. Well, Jose Ribalta did it, and did it actually relatively well. Well, he's one of the few guys that was able to uh, test the chin of Mike Tyson and exchange punch for punch with Mike Tyson. The other guys are more reluctant to stay back and just run, as Radliff is doing here. Now, so far, it's track meet. There was a right hand by Tyson, and that stopped Radliff. Turn him off now. What happens, Barry, by moving away, all you're doing is giving Mike Tyson momentum. And when you give Mike Tyson momentum, you ask for problems. says Davy Pearl. That was a slip. All right, Mike. And Ratliff continues on the bike. Hold it up, hold it up. No punches. Hold it up. Ratliff's fighting his first round, Ray, like a startled fawn. It's like a, he's still trying to survive, Barry. He's not boxing at all. All right, turn him loose now, Alonzo. Turn him loose. And still 30 seconds yeah. remain in. Round number one.
here <laughs> you gotta the in the Tour de France. France. The jazz fall out, but you gotta keep going ahead, yeah. <laughs> but you cut that ring down, you understand? You gotta be scared, but don't let it get brave, you understand? Just a little bit. So. Don't, don't go one at a time. Cut, cut the ring down, cut them down the right way. You cut them down with your palm a little bit. Cut them down. Put the angles down quick. That's it. You do it good, though. All right. So we got to push them in combination. Take a deep breath. Steel on stay steel. Steel on stay steel. Move another round. Punch in combination this time. Okay? Stay in there, Mike. Back up. whether he's going to be on a 10 speed or a 12 speed in this round on his trucks it says spartan and i think that was an apt description of his performance in the first round Redlap has been moving a great deal not doing too much what he has to do is stop every so often and fire fire back throw some punches well, he threw a right hand there but i think he cut out of there right after he threw it well what happens Redlap is anticipating a counter punch from mike tyson what Redliff can do, because he's so tall and rangy, he can try to catch Mike Tyson reaching in. Like so. That was a good opportunity there. And there was a left hand, and Ratliff will sit it out. short left hook. It was a classic kick. punch. And Ratliff doesn't, I don't think, he'll get out of this round. And Tyson right on top of Alfonso Ratliff. Another sign, of course, that you look for is can the man finish? And Tyson has left little doubt about that so far. Right hand, that should be just about it. Davy Pearl looking very closely. And that's all. It's over. Ago had a flat tire. <laughs> and the rider fell by a left off. hook. <laughs> <laughs> that incidentally is a much more important fight for Tyson than you could imagine because it qualifies him for a shot at Trevor Burbick for the heavyweight title. Very impressed. <laughs> Let's take a look and see how Tyson very professionally has cornered and has cornered Ratliff and then a short left hook. And the reason, again, as I've stated before, his punches are so effective is that he's always moving forward, always looking to hurt the other guy. Now as he moves in to end the fight, Ratliff is hurt. That right hand hurts him some more. It's just a question of letting him fall and get away from the ropes. Left to the body, left to the head, right to the head. Good night. There it is from another angle. A nice fight for Mike Tyson in the sense that he had a big guy trying to run. A lot of guys are going to try to run from him. But as they said about Joe Lewis, you can run, but you can't hide. Well, Alfonso Ratliff won the press conference the other day, and he won the music contest before this fight, he won the dance contest, and he won the stare down. Only one problem. Here's the official decision now from Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Davey Pearl stops the bout at one minute, 41 seconds of the second round. 
the winner by a TKO and still undefeated, Mike Tyson. And joining us ringside here is unscathed, unmarked, and undefeated Mike Tyson. And Mike, your man once again tried to run away, but he stopped. Well, what can I say? First of all, you know, I really I like to dedicate this fight to a dear friend of mine that passed away recently, um, Stuart Hilton in Montreal. And this fight is dedicated to him. And besides the point, I figured that he might um, try that from the press conference, from what he was saying. But other than that, I was prepared for it. I was sparring with a gentleman by the name of Mike Williams that was moving extremely fast during the sparring session. And from sparring with him and sparring with Alfonso Radcliffe, it was like he was going in slow motion, and I was prepared for it all the way. You know, one thing I noticed, Mike, in, your, in previous fights, you become more and more composed, and you compose very cool in there. What do you uh, credit that to? Um, I credit a great deal to my trainer, Kevin Rooney. Um, um, pressure pressure in a point that you must be a professional stay relaxed at all times and stay composed no matter sometimes you get hit but you just have to take it don't show no emotions at all and that's what boxing mostly is it's emotions is it frustrating Mike when a guy does run Mitch Green ran on you a little bit Ratliff does and it's likely now you're gonna see that a little bit more well not, it doesn't work at all because I they can't win the fight by running and I put a lot of pressure on them and the more they run I just continue to throw punches and I'm very elusive and they're not hitting me so I'm ahead of the way. What happens now? You're looking to a uh, Trevor Burbick fight, I know, but now there's some conversation that Burbick is supposedly signed with Jerry Cooney. What happens now for you? Well, I'm, I have nothing to say because um, my managers, I'm sure, I have a great deal of trust in them and they're going to do the right negotiations. And if it's a point of me fighting for the title, I'm sure I'm going to fight for the title, no matter who it is. But like I say, I'm, I'm number one in the WBC, number one in the WBA. So it really doesn't matter. I'm going to fight for the title either way. Are you confident right now you could beat anybody, Ron? Most definitely, yeah. Good win for you tonight. They're all good wins, Mike. Very impressive. Thank you very much, Barry. Mike Tyson. And right now with another one of the principles in the issue at hand, that is the Burbick cooney tyson trilogy, here's Larry Merchant. Larry? All right, Don King, um, Trevor Burbick is threatening to bolt from the tournament. Your view about that? Well, first of all, just let me say, only in America, is that I'm excited about HBO having a fantastic show tonight, another sellout for HBO. In regards to Burbick, I think that Burbick is going to fight Tyson in November, and uh, I think we have a rival promoter who has stooped to an all-time low now, trying to induce breach and tampering and torturous interfering with the contract uh, Trevor Burbick have with us. So I really think that the threat is that Bob Arum is trying to make him... All right, uh, Brad, Don, all right, you're saying that you have a contract with Trevor Burbick to fight Mike Tyson, but that somebody else is offering him, as we understand it, more money to fight Cooney. Can he get out of that contract? No, he cannot. He has the contract, and it has been registered with the WBC, the World Boxing Council, and the chairman, Jose Suleiman, and uh, he, has the, he has got advances in excess of $100,000 on that fight, $125,000 check in precisely for Mike Tyson, so he knew that he was fighting Mike Tyson. But Trevor's not a bad guy. Trevor's just a guy that listens to a lot of people talking to him, and they're trying right. to induce him to breach. All right, if he goes, what will happen? Will the WBC take his title from him? Who would Tyson then fight, and so on? Well, first of all, I don't think that Trevor is going to leave. I think that Trevor is going to honor his commitment, as he's always done. I think it's a, a very uh, sad time when a promoter don't, doesn't make fights. Now all he does is tar Peter fights, and that's what Aram spends all his time doing now. However, if he should decide to bolt, uh, then the WBC would have no choice but to remove recognition from him and go into the next situation. I don't know what that situation will be at this particular time. I'm looking forward to Trevor honoring his contract. If the title is vacated by the WBC, would Pinklin Thomas, who is the top-ranked heavyweight in the WBC, then be free to fight uh, 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 Tyson for the title? Pinklin Thomas is the number one contender in the WBC. After the time when that rule comes, we have to deal with that when it comes with it, but Tyson is ready to go. He's in the series. I think he'd have to fight according to how the series would go because we are going toward one heavyweight championship on HBO and the World Heavyweight Series, and we're working very hard toward that end. Thank you very much, Don King. And I should add here that Trevor Burbick, who is in Las Vegas, was asked to appear here to give his side of the story. Earlier I said, tonight, I said that sometimes uh, boxing is crazy and weird and nutsy, and this situation could be that. 
if indeed Trevor Burbick tries to bolt from the tournament, then what we have is a court case and maybe a delay in the tournament and who knows what. I'm not an expert in jurisprudence. Okay, thanks very much, Larry Merchant. And let us point out another championship that changed hands tonight. This one did change hands, and that was the IBF light heavyweight title. It was held by Shlobodan Kachar. Bobby Chez today won it in a fifth round TKO. That fight held a little bit earlier, pardon me. Ray, we talk about the politics. There's been a lot of talk about the politics and we talk about what's happening in the sport now with Trevor Burbick and Bob Arum comes along and throws a lot of money on the table and says, make this fight, but he's under contract. You've been through situations, through some of the politics in the sport. What is it like? What do you suppose Trevor Burbick is going through when people come to you and offer you a lot of money? How much involved is the fighter? Well, it's guys are manipulated and misled and uh, misguided. I think in the case of Trevor Burbick, uh, he's been taken for a ride, I would say. Um, this is a good opportunity to unify the title. He stands to be one of the guys that is considered uh, hopeful here. But uh, it's just unfortunate, and hopefully we can resolve this. Speaking of making news and speaking of politics, my man Sugar Ray Leonard here on the cover of Sports Illustrated, a fine piece by Bill Knack. But it is news, and so I have to ask, what is this? What does all this mean? Now, we're, talk we're hearing out of Boston that Marvin Hagler has made a deal with Bob Arum, that there's a contract signed, that they've agreed. Now, what does it all mean so far as Sugar Ray Leonard is concerned, and what's the status of a fight? Well, the unfortunate thing, I have not heard anything from marvelous Marvin Hagler himself. Uh, I'm waiting to hear from him. When I, once I hear from him, Barry, then we can go on from that point. But ironically, the same individual that is creating this uh, hoopla with Trevor Burbick, unfortunately, he's in the same my, my circle also. So what you're saying really then is that the contract is only a contract with Bob Arum. It has nothing to do with Sugar Ray Leonard. Am I correct? You're right. As, as a matter of fact, uh, my attorney will be going up to Boston to uh, offer a, a counterproposal, something uh, more feasible. All right.